live from New York City. It's Web Electronics with Becky Stern. Welcome back. Hi, happy new yeah. year, everybody. Uh, with me is Phil. Hello. If you've never watched before, perhaps this is your first time, or maybe you were just um, new on the internet. New on the <laughs> <laughs> each week. Welcome to the internet. Each wearable Wednesday, we go over what's cool and fun and happening in the world of wearable electronics projects we make at Adafruit, projects other people yeah. make. We share with you some tools and supplies and answer your questions, and yeah. also give you a discount code for the Adafruit store. Yeah, the longest running wearable electronics show on the internet. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> running since we started in August. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah. We want to just jump right in. Yeah, let's jump right in. Um, you want to do a, re a recap of what's on yeah. the first? Starting with the code for Yeah, today. let's pay some bills. The code is shine. 10% off. Everything in the Adafruit store expires tonight at 11.59 p.m. Um, it's in the flora and wearables category. Get yourself some wearable electronics and join in the wearable revolution. Exciting. With, this yeah. wearable Wednesday, we have a couple of New to you videos, a premiere of the uh, a new teardown video, and some Christmas cheer. All right. And then in uh, material spotlight, we're going to cover um, a what you call it? It's a el um, like stuff. A cool variation on a classic favorite. Yeah. Stay tuned for that one. <laughs> Tools we love are it's a special measuring tool this time. Ooh, stay tuned to find out what. You got questions? Becky has answers. If you would like to ask questions about wearable electronics, please do post them up in the comments on here on YouTube and on the blog and on Google Plus and Twitter and Facebook and Carrier Pigeon, and I'll put them in a future <laughs> show. And if I put them in a future show, you'll be entered to win the show's giveaway. Okay, so uh, let's kick it off. Um, I guess first we should mention right now a lot of people we know are at CES. Yeah. And my dad uh, called me on the phone actually on Sunday and said, like, Becky, I'm watching 60 Minutes, and there's this thing, the Consumer, Ele what is it called? The yeah. Consumer Electronics Show. <laughs> Get on a plane to Vegas. And I'm like, it's cool, Dad, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> but like some of our friends are there yeah. from Make, and oh, cool. um, the Maker Buck guys are there, and yep. there's like lots of fun stuff happening, and my, my dad was like, they're calling it, the theme this year is wearable electronics. That's right. And I'm like, so, I don't know what I do. So I'm, I'm calling it too this year. The, yeah. This year is year of wearables. Um, people are going to look back in like the year, a couple of years before, it's like year of the flat screen TV. Yeah. You know, year of this type of phone or something. There's like curved displays, but people don't really care that much. One year, um, we sent um, our friends at Gizmodo some TV Begones, and that was year of turning off TVs. Um, that was kind of interesting. And uh, this everybody year, now is coming. And CES is kind of, uh, it's kind of a crazy time. I'm yeah. trying to think of a word to describe it. It's yeah. like, uh, well, everything you know. all happens at once. It's like watching all the fireworks that go on for Fourth of July in like one minute. And so you have it's, to see like what kind of pans out after. Usually yeah. at CES, I find there's a, there's a the signal to noise ratio is a little bit yeah. um, frustrating. Yeah. Like there would be a lot of. Uh, companies there that rush to get to CES to show some kind of like prototype product. There's a lot yeah. of new, um, like sort of Google Glass like smart glasses that are going to yeah, come Free out in the scale next year. Yeah, Freescale and Intel introducing um, Internet of Things wearables. Yeah. So they're putting every buzzword in these things. So if you look at the, the Edison and the Freescale's Warp, um, the goal of these little tiny open source hardware, one of them is Freescale, when I, at least they say it is, uh -huh. is to embed wearables and everything and have those things connect online in some way. That's pretty so, cool. I'm excited yeah. to check out um, that new Intel Edison board and yeah, see what's SD, up with it. SD size and all that. Yeah, and their um, Intel and Vice do that creators project um, like media yeah. outlet. They have a YouTube channel and stuff and they came and filmed with us for their upcoming um, wearables like series of videos on the creators project. So I'm sure you'll be hearing more about that as that develops. Okay. All right. Let's year of the wearables, 2014. Yeah. It's not like year of the pig or the golden dragon or the. Do no. we know what is the Chinese New Year um, I don't know animal what it is this yet. year? We'll I, find last out. Last year was the the black snake, the water snake. This year I don't know what it is. Well, we, we always do something on our site because um, we have a lot of partners in China and they're kind of shut down for like three or four weeks. So. Right. Well, and they also send us um, like greetings. Yeah. So, uh, like New Year's New Year's greetings. Yeah. So I think we'll be finding out soon, and I mean, yeah. can look it up. But. Okay, Wearable Wednesday. Today is Wearable Wednesday, in fact. Yeah. What's this, Becky? This is an Instagram I took, a choppy version of an Instagram I took, of a skirt I made for my niece for Christmas. So this is your Christmas, you're getting your our holiday recap yeah. here. So um, my family, they see what I do online and they, they want they want some of it. So like... Um, They're like, oh, I see the, 
that you can make a thing? Can you make a thing for us? Well, and my seven-year-old niece, um, you know, she's adorable. So um, we have a little video of her that my sister took dancing around in the skirt. That's super cute. Yeah. She, so it's got an accelerometer in it, and it's just like the sparkle skirt code, the same as the sparkle skirt code, but I used um, pieces of NeoPixel strip, the waterproof ones, so that it'd be maybe a little more durable. Um, yeah. And uh, That's cool. And so kind of like this wig over here that Phil B made, it's kind of that strategy of, okay. of having the NeoPixel strips with zip ties attached. And um, yeah, it's a big hit. OK. All right. She'll grow out of it next year, but like, hey. <laughs> And uh, next up, you have a, a video. This oh, is, yeah, uh, so New Year's Eve, um, T, one of our Adafruit team members here in Fab, she's in, um, a, she's in a marching band, a radical marching band called the Rude Mechanical Orchestra. And on New Year's Eve, they played a gig in Central Park, and um, she wanted to have the um, instruments light up to sound. So she added a mic amplifi amplifier breakout and some of our NeoPixel rings and a modified yeah. version of the Ampliti code. Put it in her saxophone. I don't believe you. There must video or it didn't happen. Roll the video. Oh, it happened. <laughs> Neopixel project, so she's really cool. proud of it. I think it looked really awesome. And she was outfitting her other band members with things also, the clarinets. Yeah, and stuff. soon, soon. <laughs> They'll <laughs> all be in Neopixel. All right. And so that's then, what I did over break. Neo, I had a Neopixel holiday season. Yeah, the uh, two show and tells were just filled with Neopixel yeah. uh, projects. Um, we have people on now, it's starting to turn into the Neopixel power hour. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, it's good. It's yeah. easy and fun and yeah. rewarding. And then uh, the Ruiz brothers made a really adorable compilation videos of all of the wearables, our favorite wearables in 2013 that okay. I thought you guys might want to watch. All right. little animation they made. Yeah, they also are working on a very cool project that I think is going to be released tomorrow, yep. which is 3D printing plus wearable. It's it's true. We have a, a special wearable 3D Thursday project. I didn't bring it over here to show preview because I thought we'd show the video next week. So. Yeah, yeah, but, but, <laughs> but watch for it because one of the goals that we have is combining 3D printing and wearables because we think that 3D printing usually stays at home and you're printing something and you don't really get to do much with it. And wearable electronics usually need a little enclosure and you know something to contain all this stuff. So we're squishing them together yeah. and putting them out in the world. It's and great. So the, we're next showing you how. Two, the next two uh, 3D Thursday projects will be wearable, wearable 3D projects. And yeah. um, the one next week uses a flexible material. So I'm really excited to play around more with that, the flexible 3D yeah. material we just got down here. Um, mm. So look out for that on Thursday. 3D Thursday is now becoming wearable. Every day is wearable Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, the video that debuted last week while I was on vacation, we recorded yeah. previously, um, is a really nice EL materials overview. So this is an Instagram I took from the shoot day uh, when I set okay. up this, like, and yeah, you know how EL, yeah. EL panel and stuff, like it sings, the inverters sing? Yeah. Well, I had this whole table of singing in the, all these different frequencies um, so we could film all of the different uh, tape panel wire and then it has a little soldering tutorial so hopefully yeah. it's the EL video so when anybody asks you what is what is EL I feel like you could send them a link to this video we're about to show you yeah no I really like this there is there wasn't an EL video that had a complete overview of all the different types and so we talked about what videos we wanted to do this was one of them so it's finally out it's done I guess I'll roll it I yeah, guess I'll roll it, roll it.
Hey everybody, it's Becky Stern here at Adafruit where today we're talking about electroluminescent materials. EL wire, for short, is a stiff wire coated in an electrically sensitive phosphor. It lights up like neon, it comes in a bunch of different colors, and it's one of our favorite ways to make projects glow. So here's how EL wire works. Smaller wires wrap around the phosphor inside the PVC sheathing, called corona wires, and alternating current applied across the inner and outer wires makes the phosphor glow. EL tape and panel work in a similar way, where two layers of a dielectric material sandwich a layer of phosphor. EL materials are great for adorning wearable projects, like a fun animal mask or a hooded sweatshirt. Since EL tape and panel conducts evenly over the whole plane, you can cut it or mask it with vinyl to make any shape you want, as long as the cut shape is contiguous with the power connector. All EL materials need to be powered by an inverter. An inverter translates the DC voltage coming from the batteries into high voltage alternating current, or AC, required to excite the phosphor. Although it's high voltage, EL uses very little current, so it's safe to wear. We carry a few different flavors of inverters here at Adafruit. These battery-powered pocket inverters are great for increasingly large amounts of EL, from the tiny star on this shoe to something a bit more involved. For something bigger like a couch, these inverters can easily be attached to a 12-volt AC adapter. This one is even sound reactive. To solder to EL wire, first carefully strip off the outer PVC sheathing. If you accidentally cut one of the corona wires, just try again. Use a utility blade to scrape off the phosphor from the center stiff wire to get it ready for soldering. Add a piece of copper tape to the plastic just below where you stripped. Bend the corona wires back over it and solder in place. Wrap the copper tape around one more time to protect your solder joint. Then cut the connector cable like this so everything lines up. Place a larger piece of heat shrink tubing over the EL wire. Then a smaller diameter piece over the short wire we're about to solder. Tin the EL center wire and the connector's short end with a little bit of solder. Then reheat them together to make the connection. Slide and shrink that small piece of heat shrink and repeat to join the longer wire to the copper tape. Lastly, slide the larger heat shrink tubing over the whole deal and shrink it down. Test it by plugging it in and powering it up. For many designs, however, you won't need to solder your EL wire. You can create broken lines by simply shielding the light with heat shrink tubing, or use a splitter to connect multiple strands for more complicated designs. For inspiration for your own EL project, check out the guides in the Adafruit Learning System. And then don't miss our starter packs, inverters, and accessories for EL in the Adafruit shop. Thanks so much for watching, and subscribe for more videos from Adafruit. All righty, and we are back. Did you guys learn something about EL materials? Yeah. But guess what? There's more. Is there really? Yeah, we have another video. To, we have a video to debut. So the video came out last week. It's old news by now. OK. Yeah. <laughs> well, on the show lineup, I, I see this. Is this some type of alien spaceship? It is, is some type of, yes. And it's going <laughs> to take me back to my home planet. OK. <laughs> planet Stern. Um, so this week, we're doing um, a teardown of another activity monitor. Yeah. And this one is the Shine, which is the one that you can get at the Apple Store. And it has some really interesting features. It has all the same um, like insides, kind of, as the other activity monitors we've seen. Uh, maybe I don't know. Let me go to the overhead. We'll just watch. We'll just watch the video in a second. But it's um, it's the one you can get at the Apple Store. It's Bluetooth low energy, so it's iOS only. Yeah. Um, has a really cool like milled aluminum body. That's right. And when I and I spoke on a panel at um, Engadget Expand with Sunny Vu, the um, the founder of Misfit Wearables, mm -hmm. and he said they're not going to ever make a product out of metal again because it was such a manufacturing nightmare. Yeah. And um, this guy's actually made in Korea. Yeah. And um. There is one other interesting thing. I have an attachment for the same camera that we use here for filming all of our shows, and it's a microscope attachment. Mm -hmm. And I was able to use that, and they use a laser to drill microscopically, and that's what lets the light out, but it's still waterproof. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, that's really fancy. Yeah. So um, we took this one apart, and we have a video to prove it. Yeah, yeah, Lady Ada joined in and everything. So here we go. Hey, it's me, Becky Stern, Director of Wearable Electronics here at Adafruit. Today we're looking inside the Shine Activity Monitor by Misfit Wearables. Much like the Fitbit we looked at earlier, it tracks your steps, the amount of physical activity you have, the quality of your sleep, and it also keeps time. 
The shine sinks to your iOS device over Bluetooth, and the body of the device is made out of anodized aluminum with 1,500 laser drilled holes for the LEDs to shine out without letting water in. There's also a rubber gasket so you can take it in the shower, take it swimming, and not worry about it getting stuck in the laundry. There's a lot going on in this small package, so let's see what Lady Ada has to say about the design of the circuit. So let's look at the back of the board first, actually, because that's kind of where you would first check it out because it's being detached from the battery. You can see the battery contacts, which are actually just soldered on. Very simple battery contacts. And then over here, these dots, these two by five dots, these are JTAG connectors. So they put them here, you know, so that, you know, when they test and program in the chips, um, they can press the board on from the bottom onto the pogo pins and see all the LEDs light up over here. Now you can see all these cute 0603 white LEDs that surround it. That gives it that cool light effect that you see. And then we've got two main chips here. We've got an EFM32, and uh, this is actually a, a Scilabs chip. It's a microcontroller. Scilabs makes very uh, high quality, low power microcontrollers. It's an ARM32 core. Uh, it's BGA. There's got some sort of uh, water or weatherproofing material around the BGA, maybe something to keep it stable because otherwise it could crack off fairly easily because it's a, a pretty big component. And then over here we've got the CC2541. Almost every other device that we've opened up that does Bluetooth has one of the CC2540s uh, in them. This is the TI8051 uh, 8051 core Bluetooth low energy chips. This handles, this actually has a microcontroller inside of it, um, but for whatever reason, um, even though uh, some devices we've seen uses the microcontroller inside as the main micro, uh, these guys decided to have a separate microcontroller. Maybe they really like the FM32. Maybe they uh, you know, keep the Bluetooth off and they use the low power 32-bit arm. Unclear, uh, you know, everyone's got their own reasons, but since these two take up a lot of space, we're guessing there's a pretty good reason for why they have both of them. And over here, there's that uh, very common accelerometer we see in almost all of these projects that we've taken apart, the uh, list 3 dh which is the ST Micro uh, Triple Axis Accelerometer. Really good, high quality uh, accelerometer, but low cost, uh, which is what people really like about it. It's also really small. So this little guy, just probably about like 16 plus or minus Gs, triple axis. So that's your motion control. And we've got some power management stuff over here. We've got some, some big capacitors. You can check these out. And then um, what was really cool about this project is you're thinking, well, this whole thing is made out of metal. And you know, as you probably remember from your physics class, you can't uh, send radio waves through metal. Right, it's, it, it's acts as a Faraday cage. Well, if you look over here, we can follow the antenna path. You've got your CC2541, and then over here, this is the ballon. This is the antenna balancer, so that kind of takes care of all the impedance matching for the antenna, but then there's no trace antenna. Instead, if you flip it over, this U3 and L5, this is the antenna. U3 is the antenna. Um, this little uh, ceramic chip antenna, which is over here. And then if you look at the back of the board over here, you'll see that that antenna fits into this little divot right here. This is where the antenna goes. So it has a little bit of a gap from the uh, battery. And then on the back, this is all nice um, metal and it's, it's nicely coated and it's got this etching in it. But this part here that says 12 is actually a plastic insert. So this is a really difficult manufacturing step. What they have to do is they have to uh, put in this epoxy plastic into this metal after they've milled it out. It, you know, it's, it's a difficult step, but that's how you can actually have the antenna function um, even though it's inside what looks like a completely solid metal disc. So that's the, uh, this cute little shine board. It's a nice design. It's so compact. It's very interesting to see uh, what chips people use. Sometimes they go with Nordic chipsets, sometimes with TI chipsets. And uh, we'll take up more wearables, and we'll probably see a lot of these components in those as well. For this and many other teardowns, we used a pair of straight tip tweezers and the Adafruit USB microscope with its articulated stand. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and let us know in the comments about the wearable tech you'd like to see in our next. Alrighty. So that's the shine. Another teardown. Every company that makes electronics now is doing some type of fitness band thing. Yeah, well, and, and I mean, and tracker because the battery life is now like it's getting there. Reasonable for these, t and the accelerometer, that same accelerometer that everyone's yeah. using the same one in all of the activity monitors. We're going to tear down the Reebok. Um, 
head thing. Head crash sensor for, I think it's for football players. Yeah. Check light. And it yeah. will probably, I wouldn't be surprised if we found that same. Um, it's just low energy chip. No, the same, uh, I mean, maybe, but yeah. the same accelerometer. Yeah, it could be. Um, All right. Yeah, everybody's doing those. The Shine is. Um, was neat to see the unique features of it, right? How it's waterproof, and uh, it was so easy to, I've never taken something apart that a wearable, like this is a funny thing, right? I fix it just teardowns of like laptops and phones and stuff, and they rate them on repairability, how yeah. you'd be able to repair stuff. And they never tear down stuff that you can't put back together because its repairability score would be like yeah. negative 40, 47. Yeah, yeah. Um, and never before have I been able to put together the thing after I took it apart yeah. until now. The other wearables, they just sink it in a bunch of plastic. This one is actually yeah. pink, 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 and you're the done. The Fitbit is sunk in a bunch of plastic and glue. Yeah. Um, a lot of things are glued together and you have to break them apart. This, I'm, I could put it back together, and if I had an iPhone, I could use it. Yeah. I'll give it to you. You can, yeah, you I'll use, can it. use it. Yeah, I'll use it. Um, okay, we'll move right along because we only have a few yeah, minutes Yeah, you'll see left. more of the shine on the overhead later when we show you the okay. um, measuring. I'll pay some bills. Speaking of, the code is shine. 10% off everything in the native store in the wearables and floor category. Expires tonight at 11.59 p.m. 1-8-2014. I guess our disclaimer is that the uh, I met Sunny Vu at Engadget and he and he gave me a bunch of shine. So the other the other teardowns we do, um, we yeah. buy the... We buy the gadget this time. The gadget oh yeah, was I guess we us. should start doing that, huh? We should probably do disclosures like that. Well, it, up until <laughs> now, up until now, there was no need because nobody yeah. gave us anything. We just buy it. But this time, they did give us the the shine. We yeah. would have bought it anyway, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Next up, uh, material spotlight. Wilted EL. Becky, what is this stuff? This is the only thing we didn't cover in the EL video, so I figured why not just show it to you now. Welted EL wire is just regular EL wire with an extra plastic tab on it. And it makes it really easy to like staple gun to a couch or put inside your car upholstery yeah. or um, you know, Velcro on to something if you want it to be removable. So extra material so you can do stuff to fix right. it to something. Right, if you're not into sewing around EL wire, you can staple through this little sheath of plastic. Or you can sew it, you can also sew it with a machine uh, and use it as like piping for a pillowcase. Okay, that's handy. Yeah, so it's a thing. It's also our giveaway later today. So oh, okay, great. The winner of our giveaway will be receiving some welted EL wire and, a, uh, and an inverter to power it. So if you have a wearables question, Post it up in the comments, yeah. and if it's, you know, uh, if it's picked, what if it's? I don't want to say if it's good enough because all your questions are good. But all the questions are good. There's no bad questions in wearables. But the more pertinent to wearables and to the audience that hasn't been answered yet, the more likely you are to get your question yeah. answered on the show. Okay, and now our last segment besides question and answers, tools we love. Becky, I truly love this tool. Do you like this tool? I love this <laughs> tool. Right. And no, it's not the multimeter. It is the calipers. So I remember when I had knee surgery in 2010, you and Lamore came to visit me at my house and you brought me a strip of digitally addressable, one meter of digitally addressable LED strip. It wasn't, the NeoPixels weren't out yet. It was, the, it was the LED belt kind. Yeah. And this pair of calipers. Yeah. And I'm all like measuring stuff on my knee brace. I'm still high on painkillers. Yeah. We don't know how to interact with people. It's so this is how we give gifts. I brought you these calipers. These, these are from my people. <laughs> No, and I had a really good time playing with the yeah. calipers while I was on crutches. Yeah. Uh, you want to go to the overhead yeah. now? Yeah, let's go to the overhead. I'll show you some shine pieces and I'll measure them for you. Um, so, like, here's this thing. And the calipers, they have this really smooth, ah, magnets all over the place. Oh, yeah. Ow. The shine stuff has magnets all over it. Um, really smooth action here and then a micro adjustment here. You can measure the outer diameter of things with this side. You can measure the inner diameter of things with this side. By the way, I use these for a lot more than just electronics. Like any time yeah. I need to. You can also do depth with the other thing. Yeah, you thing can do depth the... um, with the depth gauge. We have a photo of that happening yeah. too. Depth gauge. And um, in general, they're really, really high quality. The accuracy is really good. The battery lasts a really long time. They're Japanese, right? In Japan. Yep. And um, if There's you don't have it, they make an excellent gift. That's what, I, that's, that's what I was trying to get at before, was that they make an excellent gift. Yeah, there, there's lots of cheap versions out there, and don't get them. Um, we only stock these for a very good reason. I'm bleeding. OK. I stabbed myself with the calipers. They're very sharp. <laughs> I like scraped my finger on this. Oh, don't look at my bloody <laughs> finger. Live electronics. Yeah. They, they cut you. <laughs> oh, no. Mm. Isn't that the, um, the title of Waz's um, hardware talk? It's like open hardware will cut you. Yeah. We do have a tank of sharks back here, and so we better be careful because they can smell blood. So. I um, I, I have bad knees, and I take a glucosamine supplement every day, and it has like shark, shark cartilage in it, and I think I'm like harvesting their powers. Take that, sharks. Okay. But apparently, I a pair, just a simple pair of calipers will bring me um, ow to my okay. 
Caution. Tools may be sharp. <laughs> all right. Let's <laughs> let's get on the questions before Becky loses all of her before blood. Before become dismembered. Yeah. Okay. You got questions. Becky has answers. The first question is from Jamil. This is great. I really want to get into wearable electronics with Flora and such. I've been messing with Arduino for a short while, but I don't know where to start with wearable electronics or sewing. Any suggestions for both or one of them? Thanks. Well, if you know Arduino stuff, then Flora things will come pretty naturally to you. All of the code is the same, and you'll understand the way the sensors work. But it, sensors work. But if you, I always recommend people if they know about electronics and they want to get into wearables, um, start with something you know, like Arduino, and then add only one new skill at a time. So if sewing is your one new skill and you've never done it at all. Um, I, st I say this in my conductive thread guide that it's, it's conductive threads a little bit trickier than regular threads. So take on like a regular sewing project first, um, whether it be like fixing a pair of pants, like with a regular needle and thread, um, yeah. just so that you like are familiar with the basic concepts, and then switch over to conductive thread, which has all these electrical properties and it's a little bit stiffer than regular thread. And okay. but you'll understand how it hooks up to your Arduino. So try head onto the learning system and check out our basic flora projects, um, the conductive thread guide. And, um, but also look elsewhere on the internet for basic sewing projects. I, I recommend like repairing something you have that's broken, like a coat or a pair yeah. of pants. And coming soon, you're working on getting started with Flora, a yeah. book that will be out one day. All right. A book that will be out one day, yeah. later this year. Yeah. Next question, Becky, I've just finished my first wearable, the Amplitai, but I noticed I created a bunch of small pieces of stainless steel. I've uh, created a bunch of small pieces of stainless steel thread. Is there anything I could do with the pieces that are under two inches? I like your resourcefulness, yeah. Cal. <laughs> um, <laughs> I personally am drowning in so. If you look at, if you follow me on Instagram, you can see that I'm drowning oh, in conductive yeah. thread constantly, and I don't save the little pieces. Um, but if you um, if you're interested in making something with them, check out our. I did a video about uh, felting with conductive steel fiber, and guess what? Conductive thread is made out of steel fiber. So if you look at the, there's a video with using it to control the makey makey, like a felt controller with um, yeah. conductive steel. So you can felt with it and make sensors. That way, um, I can't think. Sewing needle pixels very close together now because the, once you can't thread it, it's too short. Just I felt with it or throw them away. I would say, yeah, save it and make a little cute stainless steel little fuzzy thing. Flying spaghetti monster. Yeah, please. that's what I would do. Conductive flying spaghetti monster. All right, next up, this is from Jar N. Would it be possible to make a coil out of conductive thread with all these wireless power circuits in mind? I've seen. Um, Mainly from Hannah Perner Wilson and her and her friends, and they appear on the Adafruit blog a lot. Uh, speakers made out of conductive thread, a speaker so coil sewn, mm -hmm. and then you put like a magnet in the middle, and you can hear it ever so slightly. Um, that's a cool thing that does work for inductive power. Like the thing is, conductive thread's not insulated, so when you sew it in a coil to make a speaker, it makes a pretty, you know, low quality and large fabric speaker, if you wanted to make an inductive charging coil for power, like you need a lot more wraps, and so the thread would have to be close together. The fact that it's uninsulated really makes it not ideal. Um, a lot of people, one of my biggest pet peeves is, about wearables is shoehorning conductive thread into places where it doesn't belong. Yeah. Just use wire, man. Just use wire. Go home, conductive thread. You're too, you're too thready. <laughs> OK, next up, this is from Matthew. Becky, have you ever used NeoPixels in a ribbon that is braided in hair? Now that I have long, luxurious lady hair, maybe I will try it. <laughs> but I don't know if you've been watching the show long enough to see my hair get longer and longer. I don't think I had room to braid a ribbon into it before. So you could probably do that now. But the Chameleon Scarf Project put the, has the, this circuit is on a ribbon inside of the, the ruffly scarf. So you could take just the first part of that project, take that ribbon and braid it into your hair. I would like to see you, you do that. Okay. Show me. Those are the, the questions, Becky. That okay. was great. One quick reminder. I got blood all over the table. Shine is the code. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, you can use it to get 10% off anything yeah. in the uh, wearables and flora categories on the Adafruit site yeah. until 11.59. I promise I did not bleed on the I'll, giveaway prize. I'll get the first aid kit later for the chip. I've been putting, <laughs> I just, I stabbed myself with the caliper, so I've been putting pressure on it. Okay, so let's do the giveaway. That right there is not blood, that's no. paint. Okay. I'll do the giveaway with my non-bleeding hand. Okay. <laughs> this is <laughs> difficulty level five. It's le yeah, I don't really open that right. for me. I just, I just, if the winner, like I send you this, so the I don't The winner bleed on it. is Matthew, who asked about ribbons in your hair. Ribbon pixels in your hair. Well, I hope that you'll also put this welted EL wire in your hair. Okay. Congratulations, Matthew. You can email um, support at adafruit.com to claim your prize, and I'll also hit you up on Twitter. Okay. Um, thank you, everyone. Becky, welcome back. This is a fantastic first show of the new year. We have lots in store Happy for wearables. Happy 2014, the year yeah. of the wearables, according to CES 
Wired Magazine, and lots of other people. Every think it's about time, guys. And and every other journalist because they're probably going to be too lazy to write new headlines. P parrots, <laughs> they're parrots. Right? It's wearables. It's wearables. It's wearables. That's so. good for us. So. Very good for us. But we have to go through to the very cool DIY wearables and not look at not get caught up in all of the like Kickstarter, Google Glass competitor stuff. Yeah, this is all stuff you can make right now, and you can learn and share. So yeah. that's important. All right. So we'll see everybody next week. Yes, tune in every Wednesday for live wearable electronics with Becky Stern yeah. and Mr. Lady Ada. <laughs> yeah. Show and Tell is this Saturday at 9.30. And I Ask tune in. Engineer. I watch the Show and Tell to see your wearables projects. And I go, oh, it's a wearables project. Cool. Yeah. We have a, wear we have a wearable Wednesday segment on the show every week. So, OK. Bye, everybody. See you next week.